Hello again everyone, N1BUG back here with the third video in the 10 gig beacon building series. Today I wanted to talk about another exciter option for uh, for the beacon. Um, this is a uh, VHF design PLL board from Ukraine. Uh, these are fairly popular for building beacons. I believe there's been a number of beacons built uh, using one of these uh, lately and they're popular for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all they generate 10 gig frequencies directly. You don't need any multiplier or anything like that to get to 10 gigs with them. Secondly uh, they have a built-in uh, keying function so you can do your uh, CW keying, your your beacon message directly uh, in these uh, little boards. And thirdly, they're inexpensive. Uh, when they're available, uh, they're under $100 uh, US, so they're very, uh, very affordable. So why wouldn't I want to use one of these as the beacon exciter, you might ask? Well, the reason is I don't think they're the cleanest option around as far as signal quality. Um, they've been reported to have fairly high phase noise, uh, which is wideband noise uh, around the uh, around the signal, which can spread out uh, tens or even hundreds of kilohertz uh, either side. So they've been reported to have fairly high phase noise. I'll take a look at that and compare it to the uh, DGLO board on phase noise here later in this video. And also the keying is fairly hard and tends to be uh, clicky, produces key clicks which can be heard uh, uh, fairly far off frequency as well. And while I'm not currently set up to show you that, I have listened to one of these um, on, uh, on an SDR uh, receiver using a uh, TV, uh, satellite TV LNB as the, uh, as the down converter from 10368 to 618 megahertz and then received that on an inexpensive uh, SDR receiver. And I agree that they are fairly clicky as far as the uh, uh, the CW uh, Morse code sending on them. And again we'll look at the phase noise later in this video. Um, it is a tempting option. They are so affordable and they do simplify beacon construction. But I, uh, it's just a thing with me, I have a compulsion to do things in the best possible way within my means. So I am trying to uh, go the extra mile here and, and build the cleanest beacon I can. I do have a very limited budget, so uh, and I've already gone, gone way outside of budget buying these different uh, options to try. But I really want to try and make the beacon as clean as possible, so I'm working toward that end. And again, there will be more tests on all of these devices and, and the beacon as it progresses along here uh, in the coming days and weeks. But for today, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, VHF design board and uh, show you a couple of things uh, about it on the test equipment. Okay, here we have the VHF design board running on an external reference. And currently I have it generating 1152 megahertz exactly and this software uh, will tell you the current frequency you've asked it to generate and the current frequency it's actually generating. It cannot hit all of these exactly. Now on 1152 uh, 000 it can uh, as it says here. Uh, looking at the output spectrum on a 100 kilohertz uh, span I don't see any real spurs. I do see plenty of phase noise but uh, no real spurs evident and if I go and change the span to something wider like 1 megahertz still don't see anything go to 10 megahertz still looks okay put it back to 100 kilohertz here now if I change the frequency to something a little more challenging like uh, 1152 040 which would come out at 10, 3, 10, 368, 360. See here it can't quite hit that frequency, it's 5 hertz off. Uh, 039995, which would be about 45 hertz off at uh, 10 gig frequency. 
So over here, uh, looking at the output spectrum, let me just center this up on it, 752.04. So it looks pretty good at 100 kilohertz span. We'll go to 1 megahertz. Looks okay. 10 megahertz. Looks fine. So uh, no real spurs, and I have tried a number of other frequencies. I won't go through them all right now. But I have tried a number of other frequencies, and it seems to be able to do this um, pretty well anywhere without spurs. I've not yet tried it on, uh, at least in this series of tests, I've not yet tried it on 10 gigs direct, which it can do. Uh, when I get a little different test set up here in a few days, I'll do another video uh, uh, with this at uh, at uh, programming it for actual 10 gigahertz frequencies direct and we'll uh, see what it looks like there and maybe we'll be able to listen to a, a beacon signal from it on a on an SDR as well and uh, show you what it sounds like hopefully I'll get the uh, W1GHZ uh, personal beacon board built up by then and we'll also be able to look at the 10 gig output of the uh, of the um, digi LO multiplied up times 9 and maybe listen to that on the SDR as well but uh, anyway the uh, VHF design board running at 1152 looks okay as far as spurs for whatever uh, frequency you program in here around 1152 uh, there is a bit of phase noise and in a moment I'll do a comparison to the uh, digi LO uh, so you can see the difference in phase noise between the two. So here's the VHF design board running at 1152 megahertz with a 10 megahertz external reference from the Leo Bodner. And here's a 100 kilohertz span of the output spectrum. Now uh, vertical divisions are 10 dB horizontal divisions are 10 kilohertz at this uh, span so you see 10 kilohertz out either side it looks like the uh, noise is down uh, uh, maybe about 60 db or so um, and uh, by the time we get all the way out to the edges here it's uh, still uh, maybe only about 70 db down or a little more that's 50 kilohertz off either side so there's a fair amount of uh, phase noise there uh, might be a little bit easier to see if I uh, add some averaging in here just to to settle this plot down a little bit I'll give this averaging time to do its thing so yeah here we can see that uh, 10 kilohertz out either side it's maybe 62 dB down and it sort of slopes down from there at uh, at 20 kilohertz out, uh, two divisions either side of center. It's about 60, um, uh, 65 or 66 dB down, something like that. Uh, and make note of that for comparison to the uh, next plot when I compare this to the uh, to the uh, DigiLO. And all the way out here at uh, the edges of this uh, span, at 50 kilohertz either side, it's about 75 dB down or something like that. So uh, try and keep this image in your mind uh, for when we uh, compare to the next one here in a moment. Okay, for comparison, here's the DigiLO board running at 1152 megahertz with a 10 megahertz external reference and here's the uh, output spectrum at uh, this is a 0.1 megahertz uh, span so we can see the phase noise fairly uh, close in and you can see that um, this is uh, 10 dB per vertical division and 10 kilohertz per horizontal division with uh, the 100 kilohertz span. So you can see that 10 kilohertz out either side, it's maybe a little more than minus 60 dB down, and then it's uh, more than 70 dB down once we get out 20 kilohertz, and it's pretty much flat after that. 
Uh, it's a little easier to see if we put some averaging in here. Try to see past the camera here to to do this. So if we average the reading out a little bit, then you can see that 10 kilohertz out either side, it's maybe 62 dB down. But by 20 kilohertz out, it's it's 70, 76, 77 dB down, something like that. And there are those two small spurs about uh, 21 or 22 kilohertz out either side. But they're um, they're about 67 or 68 dB down, so I'm not too inclined to be concerned about those. So that's the uh, phase noise on the Digi LO board for comparison to the VHF design. This uh, definitely looks uh, quite a bit cleaner to me, which is one of the reasons I'm preferring this board. And again, remember that um, when multiplied by 9, the phase noise would probably be about uh, 20 dB higher than it is uh, here at 1152 megahertz.